Powerful Appropriations Chair, Texas Congress member Kay Granger has announced she's not seeking re-election. Granger was a leader of the core group that blocked controversial judiciary chairman Jim Jordan from his ambition to become speaker. This as in his first full week on the job, Speaker Mike Johnson has exposed major divisions in his party over whether to continue funding the war in Ukraine and an approaching November 17th spending deadline just to keep the government open. Joining me now is Republican Congressman Ken Buck of Colorado, who faced multiple death threats during the speaker fiasco after refusing to back Jim Jordan and is being evicted from his Colorado office by the landlord, a major GOP donor. So, Ken Buck, thank you. Welcome. So how are you feeling about the party as it tries to regroup following two damaging speaker battles, exposing deep rifts? Yeah, I, I think the party will come together. We obviously have a lot of very important issues with Israeli funding, Ukraine funding, uh, the continuing resolution that we need to pass. Um, I think there are a lot of uh, major issues that we will uh, unite behind. But how does it? How do they? How do you unite behind decisions, complicated decisions, with such a thin margin? What about your own role? Yeah, well, I have decided, uh, Andrea, I'm not going to seek re-election. And, you and, too. Yeah, I am uh, joining Kay and, and probably some others in, in the near future, but uh, I've decided that uh, it is time for me to do some other things. I I'm, uh, always have been disappointed with the, our inability uh, in Congress to deal with major issues, and I'm also disappointed that the Republican Party continues to uh, you know, rely on this lie that the 2020 election was stolen and, and rely on the uh, January 6th narrative and, and the political prisoners from January 6th and other things. It's, if we're going to solve difficult problems, we've got to deal with some very unpleasant truths uh, or lies and, and make sure that we, uh, we project to the public uh, what the truth is. Well, let me pick up on that because it was clearly his decision not to go along with that lie that blocked Congressman Emmer from becoming Speaker. He had a lot more votes than Mike Johnson who came in as a dark horse. And Mike Johnson, the current speaker, was an architect of the, you know, the false elector. Well, um, Tom and I both voted to certify the electors. Uh, it was a decision that I think was the right decision under the Constitution. Uh, Mike um, went to the Supreme Court with a, um, a, a, a challenge uh, to the election. I think going to the courts is, is one thing. Um, trying to move the, the mob from the mall up to the uh, House floor and, um, uh, you know, interrupting the congressional proceeding, a whole different issue. But is it now impossible? in such a closely divided House. For any Republican, such as yourself, who doesn't deny the election, doesn't go you know, with the MAGA people, doesn't go along with Donald Trump, is it impossible for any Republican who doesn't go with Donald Trump to work with the leadership and be effective? I don't think it's impossible, but I, I certainly think, um, from my own perspective, it's more important that I, my voice is out there in the public talking to people about how we move forward. Our party is the party of Lincoln, the party of Reagan. Um, the civility uh, in politics generally is less now than it was before. The ability to deal with uh, major issues, uh, you know, the sustainability of Medicare, Social Security, other big issues, we've got to address, and we can't keep uh, worrying about the last election. And we've got to focus on where we're going to take the American, where we're going to take America in, in terms of policy. Isn't Congress, the congressional Republicans now, the House at least, the party of Donald Trump? Well, uh, I, I think I'm in the Republican Party, and, and it is, there are certainly people who are followers but of Donald Trump. But you're going to be leaving. Uh, I'm going to be leaving Congress. I'm not right. going to be leaving the party, and I'm not going to be leaving my role in trying to talk truth to the public. But what what does this mean for those who remain in Congress? Well, I, I, I think this election is going to be a critical election, uh, both at the presidential level and in, in the House. And I think uh, people in, in the House are going to have to make a decision on where they want to go with the, uh, the values of the Republican Party. He is so far ahead in every poll in early states and nationally. It is so overwhelmingly likely that he will be the nominee. Would you vote or support, publicly support someone other than Donald Trump if he is the nominee? 
Well, it's going to be a very difficult decision that I have to make if that is, in fact, the case. If it is a Trump-Biden uh, redo, um, it is something very difficult decision that I have to make at the time. But I, I am not uh, thrilled with either one of those candidates. And um, I, I we'll just see what happens uh, down the road. And does this mean, I have to take a look at your district, is your district likely uh, to go Democratic? It's, it's a very strong Republican district. A lot yeah. of great uh, people that I'm going to uh, miss serving, frankly. So you don't think this would change the margins? Well, thank you very much, Congressman Buck, and um, obviously a major decision. Thank you. Thanks for, for sharing me. your plans.